But welcome to the April edition of our Transfer Club, in which we uh, bring an exclusive video uh, for the supporters who donated their season ticket money last season to enable us to sign Alan Campbell, Carlos oh, Mendes yeah. Gomez, and Fred Onyedimba. We're joined this month by our most recent signing, Robert Snodgrass. Oh, nice and the man who says he's our best ever signing, Cal Naismith. <laughs> um, <laughs> So over, over to the boys who are going to uh, reflect on their career, their time at Luton so far, <laughs> and look ahead to the season's run. Halloween. Over to you boys. October. Where are we, Stu? First question. Best memory? Go my, on. My, what is it? Probably my best memory would have been part of the, uh, having my kids. Um, I'd probably say. Um, Scotland v England um, at Wembley. Um, playing there, that was the pinnacle for an international point of view. If I um, try and get to such a big stage, I uh, have all my family not there as well. Um, so, I'd probably say for the size of the game, the magnitude of everything, um, I'd have to say Scotland v England. That's mental, isn't it? You've done a lot as well. Yeah. I would say promotion with Portsmouth. Um, it was a difficult season, I probably never got in the team till the January and then um, basically single-handedly got them up, scored 15 goals, <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, it was it was, um, it was a difficult season, got in the team at the end, played the last 15, got promoted just riding the crest of a wave for about two or three weeks, I remember that just being a real positive time in my did life. Did you run the show, um, Kel, did you? I, honestly, if did you know what's the YouTube thing, <laughs> it's <laughs> not, I'm talking, we were about, like, I'm going to talk on through so I mean, we were about eighth in the league, and the manager's no interest in picking me, and I said, listen, on. if you're what I got, you know what the script is, in the team, bang, never lost a game, 15 goals, nine assists, oh. I think it was, <laughs> anyway, um, that, that was good, but I, I would honestly say that the, the Bournemouth goals up there, I think scoring that goal um, and then just after it, the celebration with the team, seeing how happy everyone was and then doing the interview with Sky after it, I think that was the first ever time the fans started singing my name. Don't know what it took them so long to be fair because it was unbelievable for most games and then <laughs> they've, uh, they've started singing my name and that and it, it honestly just goosebumps. I was looking up at the fans and it, yeah, it was actually started to get a bit emotional during the Sky interview. That was. Yeah, that, so that was a real high moment, but I'd say between the two of them. Go on. I feel like Rod Stewart here down in Scotland though. <laughs> <For that. laughs> Who was it that done that? Rod Stewart! Tracy Higgs in it. In Glasgow. Glasgow. If we tell a memory about Glasgow, do you want to just talk about Glasgow? Glasgow, I need you to go Glasgow. On you go. So when I see that, the first thing I think is just just good people, just good people. Mad people. But yeah, mad, but but good. <laughs> Obviously, I've lived away since I was 20, but when you go back, just good people asking you how you are. Even that things like when you go into shops, just the wee lady behind the counter, she's nice, she speaks her way. Just know that people aren't nice down south because you, you, you do get a lot of nice people, but Glasgow's just friendly and everyone's everyone's just, just getting by, happy with what they've got and just, just nice people is kind of first memory yes. I get. Kevin Bridges says in the batty, then gave directions to the hospital. Boom. <laughs> They're playing that one. Cool. <laughs> you can't get any better than that, can you? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I was James Carl, just um, brilliant people, but just family, just miss my family basically. I've known the same as Carl, I've been in here sort of 15 years, so um, miss all my family, my pals, my sort of pals for, for school, so. Um, I born and uh, raised in East End, Glasgow. Um, I, I even say Glasgow right now makes me feel. Um, Glasgow. It's Glasgow, isn't it? Glasgow, it's a slang word for Glasgow. I try to teach you a couple of uh, slang words. So, um, I just just good people. The same as Cal. But I should the next one. No, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Favorite teammate. Why? Oh. I, I, I'm gonna. Um, I say. Uh, I've uh, someday that's probably on the same level. I, I, I love that. Just that when people all the time. So Cal's. Um, I've not been with for long, but I'm going to say f favorite Luton teammates. Cal definitely. Alan Campbell. He needs to up his game massively yeah. to try and get to that level. Um, 
Harry called like strategy squeeze in uh, there. Yeah, He's a bit jealous of me that I'm yeah, yeah. obviously we're tight. Um, and then, like, as I said to you, um, I've had many, many good teammates over the years, but um, I think one thing, I've got ADHD, so um, I don't know if that's a good thing for you, Kim. I don't know if that's a good thing, so. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, for me, <laughs> Honestly, I, everybody says it, but for the moment I signed, just oh, the lads took to me straight away. Well, maybe not took to me, but just made me feel so welcome. So I'm, I'm tight with so many boys here. Um, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> Snod, uh, just Jesus Christ, cracks me up every day. Uh, Clicker, Jordan Clarks, he's been my boy since day one. Came down here, we lived together, uh, so we've been tight. We lived together. We lived together, me and Clicker. I don't know that. Yeah, so when I came I down, I was in the club house. I was. Away for the family because it was nearly I signed in January and then by the time I got something sorted I was travelling back and forth, staying with Clicker and uh, one of the other boys chose Bray Hall for years in the house. I so basically I raised their game. They cut a bit with me for a wee bit and then Clicker's kicked right on this year on Jules Bray Hall's playing the Premier League. Yep. But people think yep. I don't positive effect on people. And then um, so I'd say <laughs> Clicker, Snods, honestly there, there is so many but Clicker, Snods and uh, I love we all. Aye, we always, we always meant to be who we are, innit? Aye. What you doing? Eating your tanger, innit? Two seconds in it. That was a wee draw there, two <laughs> seconds in it. <laughs> <laughs> the fans, what's your memory of the fans? You've been here obviously longer than me, so on you go, mate. So my memory, if we're going first memory, of the fans was, I remember playing against Luton for Portsmouth and it was at League 2 and we were kind of up against it when it Luton was gone for promotion and so was Portsmouth and uh, I remember coming to Kenilworth Road and obviously first impressed outside the stadium you ain't quite an old stadium you don't know what to expect when you get in and you get in and the place was rocking man the fans are so tight on you and uh, I've told this story a few times now but I'll tell it again when I was doing the programme at Wigan when I had went to Wigan and I hadn't played any championship games yet I was asked a question, uh, best away ground you've played at in actual put Kenilworth Road and it's crazy now, I must have spoke it in existence just to end up coming playing here but yeah I actually put that in for the fans, the old stadium, the feel that the crowd's on top of you and no, I've, listen I've enjoyed every single game I've played at Kenilworth Road, the fans are brilliant. Do you think that's, um, do you think the away team always coming here, yeah, sort of, they don't like that atmosphere, do you know what I mean? Possibly, or, or, or they come expecting like it to be no as good and then they get out into it and think, Jesus Christ, quite loud, intimidating, it's, 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 fans it's, it's so tight. It's ground in it, and yeah. the, way, um, the way it is, uh, the thing is, um, since, I've, since I've been here, even I've watched for a good, um, probably about six weeks before I kind of got involved, um, and then you go in the park and you realise that just the way we play, the tempo and all that stuff in it is, um, it is, it's, it's, quite, it's quite unique, um, that tight ground, actually is, um, let's say like Tyne Castle sort of Road, um, mm -hmm. when you're playing and it's, it just shows the fans are right there, yeah. um, so I, it it's, um, I've not been here sort of long enough for um, connections um, with, with the fans because it's probably only been like six or eight weeks, you know, um, but hopefully can create sort of special memories leading up to the, to the back end of the season, I've got a great opportunity, so um, yeah, um, the next few weeks hopefully I can create um, some good memories for them. But um, you will. Let's go. Pre-match rituals. Who chose these questions? Any he's a, he's a, he's a <laughs> crap. No happy. Stu, Stu, he's a crap. Um, I had so much to locker <laughs> for you and you want to know what I had for my pre-match. <laughs> Tell them who pre-match. Tell them what we did. Who pre-match. Oh, good fine. Boom. Uh, who pre-match. We've been meeting at the little cafe and... Don't tell them, because everyone will be there, you're there. Yeah, 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 no not telling me. he's where it is. But uh, we, we've been meeting at a wee, wee cafe, me, Snods and Mick, coffee, back porridge, toast and beans, heading to the game, we've done it the last twice. Me, uh, him and Big Mick Harford. Big Mick, aye. Like, we just arm wrestle for the bill, didn't we? Aye. We have an arm wrestle yeah. competition at the end, you see who gets see the bill. who gets it. Big Mick. Big Mick's been stuck with a bill three times, and he man just battered him every time. <laughs> Big Mick Harford. So, I pre match ritual out the way. Stu, change it up. Sure, sure. Terrible. That's a great answer. He, he's it's great. Fair play to you. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, what's that? Yeah, is that what's the same question? Nah, he's just doing the same question again. 
Your nails are fist to be honest then, God. So show your face to the fans. Can we here see who's responsible? Get round here right now. Honestly, he says, son in the middle, man. Come here, this is Stu. This is Stu the media guy. He's had all night to think about questions and he's come up with fans in Kennel Worth Road. Get in here, That's right now. He said he's been up all night helping his Sunday friends. You've been up all night on the Swally. Get out. Move. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> National team Ooh, moving on. Cal, who will just make your own questions aye, 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 up? Right, National team. This is actually a good one for you because I think uh, people Because I'm mean you well near it. Aye, probably, yes. aye. Um, and I've done it loads of times. Aye, so, um, I'll, uh, I'll kind of say, what, what is it um, What is it about the next step for you to say, how much would that, how much would that mean to you? It feels like as if I'm interviewing you right now and you're interviewing aye. me, but um, now, what does that what does that mean to you? Obviously, people on the outside, even the Scottish fans, must want to know how much that means to you, basically. So on you go. Um, look, I think it's just a, a dream. Since I've always had big goals as a as a young young boy. Like even when I was cutting about an Accrington in League Two, I wanted aim set your goals as high as you can. And I used to tell people, funny funny enough, back when I was like, I can I play at that level up there. I used to laugh and think it was a bit of a joke because I'm always joking, but. It was genuinely my beliefs, and one of them was I'll, I'll, I'll play for Scotland, and that was like obviously a massive dream of mine since being a wee boy. I'm sure it's everybody's dream to play for a national team, and it's just something I'm getting older now, so it's at that stage now where I'm like, come on, I, I need to kind of date soon to tick it off. Look, if I don't, I'll keep trying to progress and have the best career possible, but it's, it's something that I, I don't know how, how I'll look back, but if I never done it, I'm sure I'd look back and say, mm, that, was, that was one thing that. I probably wanted to do that I never got to do, but I'm not kind of in that mindset now because I'm, I'm, I'm positive on it and I feel that I, I will do it if I keep working hard and working towards yeah. it, I'm, I'm hopeful. Yeah, but it's, um, I, I think the national team for me basically is um, it's probably it's a great feeling, right? But it's a moment, I, every time I think it, it's like, yeah, I don't want to have that throughout my career, but it's regret that I've never played at a major tournament. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, like you said, you, you've done what so many promotions for the championship, so many appearances, top assists in the Premier League, and the first thing you go back to is saying your best memory playing for Scotland while your family are. I know that's, um, and, and as I say, I can see why you're obviously um, so passionate about it, mate, to be honest, but it's, um, for me, it's just pure regret. <laughs> that thing to myself that. I never got a yeah. chance to Why were we, we injured when the tournaments came in? No, oh, I, you reti never I retired. I retired, mate. Perfect. I retired. Uh, great, great timing. <laughs> great timing. Retired, bang, major tournament. See you later, sitting watching in the house with a can of Super Liger. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? Pure regret <laughs> sitting in the pub saying so you could have been there. <laughs> I could have done that. I used to play with him. Yeah. But I, not regret for me, but I loved every second while I was there. But I'm just hosting the, hosting the questions now. Yeah, right, yeah. ready? Favourite promotion? So many, man. Um, everywhere I feel, <laughs> I go up. Honestly, I'll talk you through them actually. So, have you ever had two promotions in a one year? No. No, many people have. I went to Cowden Beef, <laughs> Cowden Beef for six months, and they won um, Scottish League Two. So, like Scottish version of League Two, went there when I was eighteen on loan for six months. Um, for the first six months of the season, they went up at the end of the season, but obviously I got the medal for the second six months, went to Partick Thistle, uh, who went up in League One, the league above. So that was two in the one year. Uh, the one with Rangers was good, just because it was Rangers and I supported them as a kid, but that was, the again, the lowest division in Scotland. Um, never really played much. So the best one would have been Portsmouth. That was the one where I was most involved. Uh, and obviously the Portsmouth fans are brilliant as well, we fair so many of them and as I said for like three weeks just pure joy, celebration with family, with all the rest of the boys and I'd say Portsmouth was my best. See, see you said now you go on loan as a young boy, would you advise a lot of young boys to kind of go on loan? Um, and, and did you, how good did you feel as if you had learnt from that basically because I, I talk about that quite a lot I think as, as early as possible if the lads are getting in the first team but like, get yourself with my own. Mm -hmm. I felt as if I had done it when I was 17. Um, it was weird because I got in the team at 16 and then obviously um, went alone at 17. So, would you advise 
the lads to do that basically? Get out, get out straight away, see what happens, you get you get a confidence, you get a confidence that you've played the game. If you're coming through it, like say a Rangers or a big academy or even any academy, you become a bit attached to that. Yep. And they become attached, they think you're kind of part of the furniture there. And yep. If you end up staying there at 22, 23 and it doesn't work out and then you need to leave and move on, you've not got the confidence because you've not really done nothing. Other managers haven't got the confidence in you because you yep. know. If you can get out and it's 17, 18, 19 yep. play, 30, 40, 50, 60 league games, you get a confidence, yeah. you've been in a short window, people know you can do it. Your name starts then to get out there, your, your name starts to get out and then the club, the club are then in a position where, wait a minute, he's been going out and doing well, he can move on, he can yeah. go and move on and get another team. So they start treating you a bit differently than just the young boy that came through. I, I believe it's so important to get out and do that or you just get seen as kind of part of the furniture. But mm. I was lucky enough, I, I watched it happen with a lot of boys at Rangers, but I was always one. <coughs> At a stage where when I got to like 18, it was right, if I'm not going to be in there in the first team, then I, I want to go and I want to play. And yeah. I'd done that, it helped me massively. Just that confidence that I could, right, wait a minute, I, I went to League Two, right, I was good enough for that. I went to League One, right, I was good enough for that, right, well, if it doesn't work out at Rangers, I'm confident enough I could drop to a Scottish Championship level and kick on for there, or yeah. just gives you confidence in yourself. So I'd definitely advise it. I'd 100% agree with that. The, um this one here for me, Carl's massive, mate. Aye, yeah. go on. Favourite promotion for you? I, um, I basically that, so I had, um, obviously I don't know if people would know that, but I had a sort of, um, like a career ending injury I'd done my knee, I was out for about 18 months, um, and like surgeon at a time basically, and I've told you this, but um, the, the same, because a lot of people actually, a lot of people still to this, to this day can I say, oh, if you've had a uh, long term injury, can you help me through this sort of stuff? And um, for me, um, this was a, this was a, the sweetest one. Obviously, I signed for Hull in the Premier League, got a long term injury, came back at Christmas when I was when I was at Hull um, in the Championship because we get relegated. Mm -hmm. So I haven't even kicked a ball yet. Took fifty percent wage cap. Cheers. Yeah, the lads, look at the lads go like, ha, yeah, aye, no worries. The kids are eating pot noodles for their dinner. <laughs> and then look at the lads saying, aye, no worries. I'll, I'll be back. He's on the radiator reusing <laughs> them. Aye, I'll be back in January to get these back to me. Right, so I went there, um, never kicked a ball. First game of the season, 20 minutes in. Um, <clears throat> done my knee, uh, out for 18 months, came back in January and then got promoted, but that feeling, um, sitting there, 90,000 or something like that. Um, at Wembley was it? Wembley. Um, my man and Dan, that have probably been at about three or four games. They're um, not interested. Um, never been interested in coming down to watch this. So, uh, him, all my family was there, mate, and I remember just looking up and thinking to myself, this is like, if you could capture that moment and put it in a bottle and say to yourself, this is it, that's the, that's the memory, do you know what I mean? I know you maybe think best memory should have been that, but it's no, there's been that many. Ah, you've done that much memory. in the game. Uh -huh. uh, but in terms then. of, if you go in day once, saying, um, if you play any sort of level again, mate, here in day once, man, I don't know if he done it to try and motivate me or to try and push us, but um, to come back and get that promotion at Wembley was unbelievable, mate. Oh, frightening. Goosebumps, goosebumps, man. Nathan Jones. Brilliant, he's just sitting right there. Brilliant, he's Best sitting in the back. In the Gaffer, how are you doing? Best guy hey, I've ever worked with. Man. Incredible. <laughs> Brilliant, Cal, isn't he? Well the done, Stu. This is where you organise. Questions like that, right next to the Gaffer's office. Brilliant, mate. Well he's done. Nah, Cal, okay, what do you know in there? Shocking. I'll be honest, I'll, I'll answer that. He, um, Aye, he, he, he was he was the reason why um, I signed. Mm -hmm. uh, we done a lot of stuff in the background to make me um, come to the club. I don't, obviously, I don't know yourself, but for me, he was he was a defining factor. He was always on the phone, and he was always talking about the uh, the environment, the place. And I'll be honest with you, since I've come in, he's been buying with the money. Um, everything he's said to me, uh, he's been very honest, um, loyal. Um, and how many staff have created an unbelievable environment. The players have made me feel welcome, the fans. Um, and I just, uh, uh, as I say to you, I think, you know, sometimes when you, you hear the words for somebody to try and get you in through the door, um, and then when you get in, it doesn't really work out. It's uh, been exactly for me. So 
Um, no, he's but he's a he's a terrific man. Um, he's just obviously won the, the manager of the year award, so not good on him. Yeah, no, I'm I, I'm the exact same. I've only got good things to say. I probably never spoke to the gaffer as much before I signed. Um, it was just everything happened a bit late with me in January. Got the phone call to head down, but then for the moment, for the moment I met him. The weeks leading up, never played much at the start, but it was always in dialogue with me. Spoke to me, says, "Listen, just get fit, this and that." And then, look, I, I felt that since I teamed up with a gaffer, that he's the reason that I, I feel like I've almost just started in football. I just got that respect for him, for the coaching staff, and the fact that he gave me the uh, the armband and Sonny's absence this year and stuff like that. Just. I'll never be able to thank him enough and regardless of what happens now going forward, I feel he's the first manager that's ever put faith in me and gave me that confidence going forward. So for me, just unbelievable. He'll be the biggest reason whatever happens in my career. But um, in terms of just as a man, as a coach, as a different class, like how he explains his tactics, how he gets his teams to play, how he makes everybody believe in it. Um, I've had boys who say to me, what's it like? Or would it be good for me to come and play there for him? I say, Anybody come and play for him, he'll improve your game. He'll improve your game so much. He's he's a top coach, but uh, yeah, as I say, for me, he's been he's been the reason that anything positive in my career has happened. Good good balance as well. We big Mac Paul, yeah, the, the, the older, full older team heads, is Chris yeah. Alan Sheen, um, Chris Cole, the full, full staff basically. I, I think they all they all played a part. That they all played a part, yeah. didn't they? Do you know what I mean? As much as he's saying there about the the guy for uh, getting an award, but. Um, you know, you've obviously got a good team behind, behind um, you try and help in that situation. And that's what I've noticed since we're getting, they've got all um, avenues covered. Um, and and I, like, I like that balance. Um, you need older heads in there. Um, you need obviously the, uh, the youthfulness of the, the boys to come in and have that you know, buzz about them for training every day as well. And, and um, It's like a young man's game, but be a touch of um, experience and, and they've got the mix as much as you need it on the park they've got it after park as well so no good on them yeah and it's the last one is it I think we've got two more there as a proper legend man big Mick Harford the best the arm, arm wrestler best. in Harpenden <laughs> <laughs> the best <laughs> arm wrestler <laughs> in Harpenden Honestly, uh, he does not mess up out, does he? No. What? <laughs> He's just away where the cafe is now. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm not talking your name. But I'm a. Uh, he's, um, for me, him and, as I said there about him and Paul Hart, um, I don't think, um, you know, in terms of the, the approach week to week, I don't think people get to see the full, um, the full thing, um, the team obviously behind um, the lads. and. For me, he's brilliant. Just little bits of information. Um, just, just calm in the situation, then you know. Just like um, key words, little bits. Always, always there for the lads for a chat. Um, wishing the boys uh, good luck. And he's got that that steeliness about him, you know. That uh, grit that I feel um, is great for the boys, but also a calming influence as well. And no, as Cal says, a proper legend. Unbelievable guy, um, he, he, we say the same thing every week, don't we? We go for breakfast and Big Mick leaves early to shoot off and obviously get into the stadium to set up and whatever he does and uh, every time he leaves me and him just look at each other and go, what a guy, just just what a proper, proper guy and um, for me he's played a huge part in this year in terms of what he's been through, what he's done, missed uh, a few months here, came back always a smile on his face, always fighting, uh, i said that a few times, but he's in the gym, he's in the gym more than most of the boys, he's doing his squats, he's doing his stuff, and I know subconsciously that rubs off in the full squad, and yeah. he's played a massive part on how successful we've been this year, um, I know that, I know that for a fact, just with having him about the place, then him having to go away and have his own fight, and then coming back, and how he's been since he's been back, uh, yeah, he's big mix. No, so, man, man, he's, he's so, man. He's brilliant and his quads are humongous. Oh my god. His quads are amazing, aren't they? Great question. I bet The running, that for me is um, it's massive. Uh, I think uh, the way the games and that have went, we're in a great position. Um, <clears throat> and it's a position where um, these could be the, the best moments, say, 
probably um, some of the lads, some of the lads' careers, in, in, in my opinion, um, and and so mine of as I said to you in terms of uh, coming and being part of that uh, squad, that environment where you know at the start of the season, uh, obviously the staff and stuff, and people touched on it saying obviously overachieving and all that stuff, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't feel that at all. I feel as if. Um, We've got exactly what we've deserved in this position because of the hard work, the determination, um, the, the the togetherness, um, everybody uh, leaving it all out there on the pitch, everybody every day in training. Um, it's just a it's just a good place to be in every day. Um, but I think in this running, I think need you need a little bit more. Um, I've been in those playoffs, and, and I think the concentration levels need to be buying on the money. Um, there's little key points, key factors, and you need a little bit of luck along the way as well. Um, and obviously, people watching are probably thinking we've no really got any at the minute with the amount of injuries that we're having. Um, but listen, we, we we don't cry about spilt milk. Well, we're, we're always just saying right, like, okay, that's happened. But either lads the care they need, but somebody else comes in and they just do a job and they do a job and they do a job and that's what it's going to take. And then hopefully in the back and they're running. Make sure your, your question is there. Um, that obviously more lads come back for injury and obviously bolster the chances to try and um, you know get this club to the, the promised land as you say in the, in the big league the Premier League so it's um, it's a great position to be in very enjoyable position as Cal touched on it a, a right few times saying you know the pressure's half he says it at half time there's no, there's no pressure enjoy it enjoy being in these positions enjoy being in this moment because as I said to you it's the best days of your life that's uh, everything covered there for me. Just pure excitement. Excited for it. I've never been in this this place in the championship, and I'm uh, I'm buzzing. Honestly, I'm looking forward to Fulham Monday, uh, and then the last game of the season is always special. Hopefully, we've done it by then. We're in the playoffs. I can um, look forward to hopefully walking on the pitch with wee, my, my wee boys after the game, doing all that stuff. That's always something to really look forward to, and then into the playoffs, man. Jesus Christ, it's just. Everybody on a high buzzing and uh, just yeah, really, really excited. I'm glad we finished with a, a decent question at least. Not oh yeah, no, one, one, ten, you, one out you, of ten. I uh, had ten questions. We got one eventually. Well done, Steph. Fair play to you. The Glasgow one was alright. Uh, Thank you for your time, boys. You've been brilliant. Uh, and no uh, we'll look forward to doing it again next month, shall we? Yeah, cheers. Top man.